Uh, not too long ago, I was downstate in uh, the area where I was born and raised. For me, what was the old country, Brooklyn. I had a job doing some storytelling down there, and when the performance was over, uh, since I was fairly close to where my old neighborhood was, I decided to go over, take a walk down memory lane, and see how much of what I remembered from my youth was, was still out there. Well, the house was still there. The big elm tree that used to be in the front yard was gone, and the stucco was a little darker. But other than that, that part looked fine. And I decided to walk up to the boulevard. I was getting hungry, and to see what shops were still there that I'd remembered, and uh, maybe pick up something to eat. Well, there was a fruit and uh, produce stand there, uh, which my mother referred to as Tiffany's. Uh, because of what they charged for for the produce, I never really knew what I never really knew what the name of the store was, but it was always called Tiffany's. And next to Tiffany's, there used to be Kaplan's Kosher Meats. Uh, however, as a reflection of the change in neighborhood demographics, Kaplan's Kosher Meats had become cows and sows. <laughs> and on the other side, there had been a marvelous bakery, the Four Star Bakery where you go in there and you would just find this luscious, deep, sour pumpernickel and uh, a, a vibrant rye and, and a delightful northern cornbread, but that place was also gone. Well, I went back to the uh, produce place, to Tiffany's, and I picked up a navel orange, and it was, it was almost a dollar and a half per pound for these things, a piece for these things, a piece. And I started to turn to the grocer and say, uh, would you take a dollar and, and I stopped. It's amazing, this orange had brought to the surface a whole flood of memories of my living down there and, and life with my father and my grandmother. See, my father was the first one to make it to this country. He came in as a late teen, took a number of uh, technical courses, uh, did quite well, got a uh, nice job, got married. They bought a house in Brooklyn. Uh, my grandmother was still living in the old country, and it took a, a long time for her to get over here. I'm not sure if it was a problem with the paperwork or the fact that she didn't want to leave the uh, land of her birth, but she didn't get over here until both my brother and I were born. Now, when she came over here, she had a bit of a problem with, with uh, uh, American customs and also with the language. Uh, she just didn't speak English very well at all. Uh, my father and, and, and my mother spoke quite well. They also were hard workers, and they were gone most of the time. So um, my father figured the best thing to do was to put his mother, my grandmother, to work. And the best thing to have her do was to cook for the family. Now, the cooking wasn't going to be a problem. The problem was the shopping. He thought about this for a while, and then a couple of weeks later, he took, uh, he took his mother in hand, and they walked up to the boulevard, and he introduced her to the meat store, and he introduced her to the produce stand, and he introduced her to the bakery, and he said, Mama, we want you to do the cooking, but when you go shopping, just buy from these three places. I remember my grandmother, all four foot eleven of her, heading out to do battle with uh, the, the shopkeepers with her little wire basket with a squeaky wheel as she'd head off to the boulevard to face off against uh, Kaplan arguing over the uh, prices of lamb chops and uh, whether or not that little extra fat on there demanded a, a reduction in the price. She was a, an amazing an amazing bargainer with, with just a little bit of English, a little bit of Yiddish, and a great deal of body language. <laughs> and then she'd go to the produce next door, and she'd speak to Klein in, in, at Tiffany's, and, and she'd get amazing prices on, on all the fruits and the vegetables. And then she'd go to the bakery, and, and she'd show them how it was, it was not right that that you same charge the same thing for those bagels that have so few poppy seeds and sesame seeds. <laughs> and that challah over there, that's that's clearly the first one out of the oven and by definition the oldest. And you shouldn't charge as much for that. She did very well shopping. 
Well, she was happy. We were happy. She uh, cooked very well. I ate well, possibly a little too well. And uh, my grandmother never realized that at the end of the month, my father would go down to the shops and pay up the difference between the regular price and the Sophie price. 